Hey everybody, this is Heroic with another video. Thanks so much for stopping by to watch it. So earlier this afternoon, we have the Dungeon Boss game and the release of yet another new hero. And this one is going to be named Augustus. He's going to be a Holy Paladin. And before we get into the details about this guy, I'd like to just kind of bring something out, just a personal opinion here. So I would say in the last month and a half, we've had the release of several... Uh, new heroes. We've had Lord Zom, uh, we've had uh, Indigo, Pygnus, and now we have Augustus. And so I'm all for uh, the release of new heroes. I think that's a really good thing. However, I am a little bored, and I will show you why here in a second, with this problem. And I know, maybe I shouldn't be so picky, but here we have Overlord Executum, and just uh, focus on this guy for one second. Don't blink, just a second, and then we'll quickly slide up here. And we will take a look at Augustus and his graphic. And, oh my god, the old same guy, uh, just a different color. Really super weak, in my opinion. I mean, I know, I figure if you're going to be a progressive game in this market of freemium games, and I'm not saying that they're doing poorly. I'm sure they're making money hand over fist, Not even, and I've contributed to that. But if you're going to keep my attention, I would really like you to hire a better graphics designer and come up with some new interesting stuff. I mean, game players do it all the time with characters, and either one of two things, either stop pumping them out so fast or find somebody who knows how to draw and make a better character out of it. Just my two cents. All right, so let's talk about this guy. Augustus, the, according to their card, warrior, healer, armored. Probably a little grammatically out of place, but who's being picky, right? So he's an armored warrior and healer. This is the quintessential paladin. If you've played World of Warcraft before, <clears throat> you may be familiar with a paladin. They are a damage DPS slash healer and typically do not excel at either of them. They're either decent at healing and decent at, uh, you know, at, at damaging, but they're not very good at all at, at, you know, really excelling at both. But this is a completely different game. So who knows how they've worked this out. We have to try this out. First off, I took the liberty of going ahead and leveling this guy up to 60 so that the stats and the damage that you see on the spells are reflective of that level. So they're going to be less if you're not up this high at this point. Let me click on the question mark to take a look at where this guy's tokens are. First off, you can get his tokens um, in the quest log. There are some quests for uh, taking him out, and then you can... Uh, gain a series of tokens for him. But as of right now, there's a very limited campaign uh, list here. We have a three, and actually one of them is not even available to me. But he is piggybacked into these other um, dungeons, and you can get both of those tokens out of there until otherwise notified. When we click on the stats, <clears throat> here's his uh, little background. The champion of truth and justice, defender of innocent, quintessential paladin, right? And of course, being a light hero, he has the advantage over dark uh, heroes and enemies, so we're good there. Kind of expected that. Before we get into the traits, let's go ahead and take a look at his statistics. Uh, for those number crunchers out here, feel free to pause the video and take a look, but I just wanted to scroll you, show you rather uh, while I scroll. That at level 60, uh, this is um, what his stats look like, and you can pause the video, of course, again, uh, to look at anything specific. All right, so let's get into the traits. So the first trait that he has here is armored. He will take less damage from physical attacks. Typical armored trait. And the next one is going to be the Holy Shroud, and he will take, in this case, less damage from demons. But then in the next one, he also does more damage to demons. So that works out. He takes less from them and gives more to them. That's not a bad thing, necessarily. And, and the last one, this one, <clears throat> or second to last one, rather, this one's really interesting to me, and I'm going to try to figure this out very quickly. Uh, quick Starter, which will start all the dungeons off with added ability energy. And what I am hoping this does is for the entire group, as long as he's part of the party, because it looks like a passive trait, it will give uh, walking into a dungeon, and let's just say we're talking about one of our harder-hitting, high-energy cost um, attacks, let's say it requires five to execute, they would walk into the dungeon only requiring four. And if that's true, I think that's just awesome. I'm we're actually looking forward to that, but we'll see here in a minute. And then the last one is going to be spread the wealth. Uh, and then when this guy's HP is full, it will do a heal over time or HOT to the rest of the team. Now, I've said this before. Chief Nub Nub is so heavily revered by the other players because of one 
major advantage that he has. And that is, is that he has the ability to get the entire team healed up in approximately one to two, maybe three turns at the most. And I think that's an incredible advantage to have because it seems to me that the majority of the attacks that are used by uh, PVPers and other characters are all AOE style attacks. So they damage all of the players at once. So you need a heal that heals all the players at once in order to be able to counteract that properly. Well, most of the, aside from Chief Nub Nub, there really isn't any other healer that does that on a regular basis. Um, and so, uh, you know, granted, he only has the one heal, but it's a low level, meaning you can get to it pretty early in the fight. Um, and it does a really good job over several rounds of, of fixing damage and staving off any further damage. So if this guy's even halfway in the ballpark of that, it could be super advantageous uh, to have in your team, especially now with the energy um, ability. So when we look at the abilities, now I took the liberty again of... Um, ascending this guy one time, and I uh, also bumped up all the attacks so you can s see them. So at level 60, we have a basic swing, and then we have the second level of smite, again, because I ascended him. And this one, uh, melee attack for 1447 uh, with a base damage of, excuse me, a extra damage of 1.5 times to demons, and it will purge two debuffs. Before I made the first ascension uh, for smite one, this would only, exact same thing but would only remove one of the buffs. So in, in level two, it will do two. And then we have the other, uh, I would say, uh, very common, uh, when I ever see Paladins in other games, this lay on hands is always part of it somewhere, uh, cleanses all debuffs and heals the player for 99% of their health. So at tier 60, this did this. And as I was leveling this up, the percentage would go up. So at level 10, it was only doing, you know, a certain, a smaller percentage, single digit percentage. And as I leveled it up to max, then that HP percentage went up with it. So uh, at this level, you would get to heal one player completely and get all the debuffs off of them. So the first ascension was not bad. I don't unfortunately have the complete stuff to, or the complete materials rather, to ascend him for the second time. But we can at least look at what he does, uh, what he gets. And so, of course, we have Smite 3, which, again, same amount of damage, same uh, point value uh, increase or modifier for demons. But instead of just two purges now for level 3, you can remove three buffs off of, uh, uh, off of an enemy. And then we have the Aegis Wall, which is a shield that will heal, uh, and then will block the next attack on each ally. So this will basically bubble your party and uh, and give them an opportunity to take a hit without actually uh, getting hit with the damage. And so it's basically a freebie. And then we have uh, Quick Starter, which again is, is an upgraded version of this energy ability uh, that we will see in dungeons here. So um, quick opinion about this. I think that this guy could have the potential to be a really neat healer in addition to some parties. Um, being armored, it's nice that he'll be able to take a little bit of a damage. And more importantly, he'll be able to give some of that damage back. But in being able to heal, um, at least to some degree... Um, and that would need to be seen in more in-depth review of, of dungeons and PVPs and so forth. Um, this would be a really nice multifaceted hero that could be added. And depending on how much damage he does, and this would also need to be taken into consideration, you could possibly use him in a party along with Chief Nub Nub and basically carry 1.5 healers. Um, where Chief Nub Nub would be your primary, and then you could do single target healing with Augustus um, and really... And still not have a spot taken up with no damage. So I think that's really good. I think uh, it, it could give a, a lot of flexibility and probably very critical to getting to the top of the uh, Tower of Pwnage, uh, depending on how well this guy performs. So I'm very curious about this trait here where we talked about the quick starter and... Um, Near the end of the video, I was able to uh, get this guy fully ascended uh, because I was really curious about, um, I wanted to just get that done so I would be able to give a better review. Not that this really has anything to do with it, but in any case, uh, Quick Starter 2 starts all dungeons with added energy. And I wanted to test um, this out because I wanted to see what exactly it does. Um, and I tried a couple different things and I just want to show you 
what that is. So going into campaign, um, I go into this, you know, higher level one, it's a level 53 zone. And um, when I get in here, I do not include him in my party. And I just use a normal party. And when this comes up, and I'm using Willow as sort of my benchmarker here, but you'll notice that her first ability is available, and then her second ability is available for three energy, and then her highest ability will be available for five, right? So first one's available, then we have to get three energy for the next one and five for the next one. So let's go ahead and retreat out of this dungeon, and I'm going to come back, and I'm going to replace um, the same dungeon. I don't really think that matters too much, but we'll go to the same dungeon, and I uh, will take out Igarok, and I will replace him with um, Augustus. And when we come back into the dungeon, I don't really seem to see a difference here. Um, we still have the first... Uh, ability that's available, but then the same thing. We still see three uh, for the second attack, and then we see five for the next attack. So his being in the party or not didn't seem to affect that. So then I said, okay, well, this is maybe a dungeon, but maybe what they're talking about is PvP. So I go ahead and I retreat out of here, and <clears throat> with or without him, it's three or, three or five, right, for Willow? So we go to the dungeon... And I'll uh, pick a battle. And when I enter into a raid with him in the party, no different. Still part of the of the uh, of the party here, so we should see some difference. We'll slide in here, and I'm gonna end up eating this because I don't think I'm gonna do the battle. But when I come in here, um, we again don't see any difference. We she comes up first uh, for my party's attack. And she still has the first attack available. And then directly after that, it is three for the second attack and five for the next one. So I don't know exactly what that does. I don't understand how it is different. And I don't really understand what it is doing. So if anybody else knows that information, I would be incredibly grateful if you could throw that into comments and help some of my subscribers and viewers uh, understand that because I... I've done what I think is a decent experiment in understanding that, and I don't, it's not happening. Anyway, thank you so much for stopping by and watching the video. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing. And don't forget to like and comment if you have any new information or updated information about this guy, especially if you've been using him and you've got a cool strategy that might be applicable. Anyway, thank you again, and I will see you at the next video.